Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. And many moons ago, we did a video on Balador's Wraith Weavers and talked about the pros and cons of the build we did. We came to a conclusion that the exotic was lacking a few things to be worth the investments down the line, but as of now, it's been buffed to improve its overall usage like shown. So today, we'll be redoing the build once more, and I'll be showing you why this Balador's Wraith Weavers build is worth the investment with pros and cons as well. So to start with the general aim and exotic of the build, our aim is to showcase the Balador's Wraith Weavers, new buffs, and how it will effectively play in the game. For this, we will be using Balador's Wraith Weavers and Salvation's Grip. A start with the exotic armor, Balador's Wraith Weavers, with his exotic effect, Hearts of Ice, targets frozen by your Winter's Wrath, Super, takes increased shatter damage. Allies in your range of your Winter's Wrath, Shockwave, and Frost Bolts gain Frost Armor and deal increased damage with status weapons. A grant these buffs to allies grants you super energy. Within the new update, a Balador's now has the ability to apply Frost Armor to allies at max stacks and also provides super energy for us to do so. Although this doesn't look like it's working at the moment. At the same time, time to force data surge buff is still an issue for how limited its effects are, but luckily this does apply to us, so we can use this with a stasis weapon that has bait and switch or explosive light for a nice big DPS dump after super usage. Outside of that, with how this season is heavily based around stasis items, this build with its unique force armor application allows us to expand this stasis verb even further than ever before. Our second exotic is the Salvation Grip with its exotic effect, Cryo Cannon, which states, This weapon's charged projectiles creates a pattern of stasis crystals on impact, and frees nearby targets. While it has received a buff a while back to make its action better fitted, it has now become quite popular overnight thanks to its changes as a whole. With the seasonal mods and exotic armor at play, we can use this grenade launcher to weaken, apply freeze and slow, grant frost armor, and even shatter for large amounts of damage. It's quite busted with his charged shots, as applying multiple charged shots, and then using super as well, will apply the 100% shatter damage increase just from Balladors. Of course, the build is flexible for stasis, so if you have a headstone based weapon, that can work as well. But Salvation's Grip tends to be the more better option for this here. For aspects of fragments, we have the following. A Feed the Void, where defeating a target with an ability will grant you Devour. Bleak Watcher, where converting your grenades will turn them into stasis turrets that will slow and freeze targets. A Fast of Devotion, where defeating targets inflicted with stasis or strand debuffs grants bonus light transcendence energy. A Fast of Ruin, which will increase the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target. It will also increase the AoE effect of solar ignitions. A fast of protection, where being surrounded by enemies will grant you damage reduction. A fast of balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy. And a fast of awakening, where rapidly defeating targets with light or darkness damage or super final blows generates elemental pickup of the matching damage type. So let's go over what we have. A status super with status turrets and feed the void is a must for the kit in general, since our exotic armor unique effect will increase our status shatter damage against frozen targets. With this in mind, you'll then want to add faster of room for the extra shatter damage as well, along with faster of devotion to help generate transcendence energy over time. A balance and protection are two fragments that can be potentially swapped out depending if you don't care about the extra benefits they both hold towards you. And then lastly, Awakening is a new one, as a faster command would be better suited for the status weapons being used. However, Awakening is being used to trigger a Crystalline Converter mod, which will allow us to create a Glacier when using our status melee. While I may be using Incinerate Snap in this case, I will be opting in and out of our melee option so often so it's not a huge deal. Plus, the free status charge does grant us extra melee energy which does benefit us overall. For the modern stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Strength is also being supported here. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. We have added the Concussive Dampener mod for the reduced AoE splash damage done to us, and the Sustained Fire for the increased damage reduction when using our AR. With how often we are able to trigger Frost Armor on our build, we should be able to tank more shots compared to everyone else we play with. I know my resilience does show 111 as its base stat, but please ignore this, as removing a resistance mod and replacing it for a strength mod will give us a 54 second cooldown 
for a solar milli usage instead, so this is just for show for now. A discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenades. Cold snap isn't so much needed for the build to work, but it's nice to have if we ever need to instant freeze targets. Uh, the flexibility of the grenade is down to you, since we are mainly using our status turrets to help support the build. Outside of that, if you wish to use a lethal grenade instead, you can, as this won't take away too much from the build at all. Now, uh, this brings us to the additional marks which are recommended for buffing our key stats. Momentum transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff, impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, bolstering detonation for a 12% class ability buff, and distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the key areas of the build. Additional mods we have the following. A stasis siphon for creating all the power via stasis weapon type. Special ammo finder for increasing the chances of special ammo dropping. Heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon. Charge up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. A stasis holster for auto loading stasis weapons when put away. Stasis Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% Stasis Weapon buff and Time Dilation for reducing the decay time for armor charges. Now as we have covered our Exotic Heavy Weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. Now in terms of what I recommend, they're all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our primary will be the Live Fire SR with Rhyme Stealer and Headstone. This is a brand new weapon with a perk combo I've been trying to get for quite a while now. Uh, the following two perks work in conjunction with each other, to the point of where I can get frost armor whenever I like. This is perfect, as this means that you don't need to use wind chill seasonal mod, and thus can opt into another mod instead. This also plays into the build where I grant frost armor to our allies and ourselves as well. Now, while this might not be easy to farm, any stasis weapon that can get headstone is fine to use instead. Uh, the bold ending hand cannon is a good choice, as it hits hard. I can also get the collective action perk along with headstone for a nice damage buff along the way. In secondary, we have the four bearings with ambitious assassin and chain reaction. This here will help with clearing out groups of enemies quickly, but also being useful for destroying frozen enemies or destroying glaciers. While a more direct grenade launcher might be more preferred for most players, a standard wave frame such as this is more ideal when using a stasis build in general. Now, concluding on the build and the exotic, I feel it doesn't get the right recognition it deserves, as the Balador's Wraith Weavers are 100% worth the investment for this season, but only in specific scenarios. With the added buffs applied to Balador's, where we can apply the times 4 stacks or stasis shirts to allies and ourselves, and the maximum force armor, it allows us to lean more into the supportive role than ever before, where beforehand, this wasn't really the case. A frost armor being the main plus of the build is quite beneficial with this season seasonal mods at play, and whether users using the same mods or not makes no difference, with benefits being provided. As shown, our build covers the supportive section quite well with the increased damage buff and extra damage reduction being applied to ourselves as well, so everyone is gaining something out of the kit. On top of that, using Salvation Grip with Kinetic Impacts, Brain Freeze, Helder Storm, and even Concussive Reload allows this once laughed upon weapon to become a weapon of mass destruction in a, well, a second's time. I'm really not kidding, you do need to use this with Facet of Ruin on hand, it's absolutely wild as to how much damage it can apply. This overall provides a perfect kit that reacts well with the seasonal mods available. However, the build's ability to use our exotic past the current season is where my issues start to appear. Balladors and his kit is fine currently, and it does excel well in the higher contents, but the times 4 status surge buff feels like a miss with players wanting to use something else more often. How often do players you know that you play with use status weapons? This is a downside of using the exotic in the environment of players not using a specific element of type, as for me personally, I will benefit from it, but my teammates aren't benefiting from it either, so then is really, you have to ask yourself, where does this really play into? Personally, if they can adjust the exotic to allow non-elemental weapons to also get buff, let's say times one or times two, this will be feasible enough to see outside usage of the exotic on a whole. This build in all its glory is hidden but interesting that players should try out and solely for the season seasonal mods. While it may not be OP like most would imagine, it does play the sport of all pretty well, 
while also benefiting the end user on the hand. If you ignore the surge buff or something per point, it can have some usages outside of its environments pretty well, which of course will vary from player to player. So there we have it, I hope you enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below or if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.